Welcome to our more detailed poinsettia lesson. Um, I made a couple of looser ones that you probably saw uh, so that you would have a um, option if you didn't want to go into as much detail as this one. Uh, I printed this out uh, from online and I want to go pretty much leaf by leaf on this one so if if you if that's a bit much for you if you're a beginner and that's a bit much you can always uh, replay yesterday's video with a looser one that doesn't have quite as much intricate detail but let's see if we can't get to work on this so everybody can have a poinsettia for their Christmas card What I'm going to do is pick up, let's see which one I want. This one is a number five, but you can see he's not that big next to my finger. He's not that big of a guy, uh, but he's not my smallest. This is my tiniest brush, so there's quite a difference in the size. But he will be good for... Uh, I'm going to start from the middle and go out. He will be good for small detail where I don't want to wet the whole area. I just want to wet a, a small area. Before I wet anything, I'm going to clean up. My pencil lines on that one were a little bit dark. I freehanded this one and so I probably pushed a little too hard on some spots. If you don't want to lift everything, like if I wanted to lift everything, I'd be moving it like this. But if I'm just trying to lighten it, tapping seems to work real well for lightening it without um, eliminating your lines. And on the lighter leaves, like this one, that's going to be um, a green baby leaf, you don't want it to be too dark. So I'm going to do him in yellow first. And then I will add let's see here sap green I think we'll put in sap green and let that just sort of run into the yellow I'm going to put a tiny bit of red in here and the reason for that is these leaves do turn red at their babies they're green but then they do turn red so now I'm barely touching the the water that's there with the little bit of paint that I have on my brush. Um, that is a technique in watercolor where you're just adding another color and then letting the water mix it. Um, I'm not going to mix that, I'm going to let the water move it and it'll probably wind up moving a little further along, maybe create some little veiny shapes. I'm not sure exactly what it'll do because it's not very predictable with water, uh, but it sure does look cool. And while he is doing his, I'm going to put a little bit on that vein. While he's doing that uh, water processing, I am going to come over here and mix a brighter red. And it doesn't matter what brush you use for that. But I'm going to grab some of this crimson red and put it over here so that I've got kind of a well of it. And the reason is it's a little too, it looks good here, but when you put it on the paper, it's a little too, um, what do you call it, uh, rosy. And I want um, a nice uh, orangey red, which is more typical than this uh, rosy crimson. Well, it says crimson, but it just does not seem very crimson to me, so... I'm mixing a little bit of my new gambage into it to make it more of the color that I like. Now these baby leaves are often considerably lighter. Uh, sometimes you've seen the poinsettias, they have like two colors. Like some of the leaves are almost white. And so I thought we'd, I'm watering this one and I'm going to do this baby right here. And we're going to put a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow in them, but we're going to leave them fairly light. 
and I'm only doing a couple at a time because it dries out on me and then we don't get that same effect and since this particular card is being a little more detailed you can add a little bit of orange into that and you can lift out a little bit if you're saying well I kinda want a white spot in there that's fine you can lift it out before it starts to dry and this little guy over here is still somewhat wet not very maybe I better wet him a little bit more see how fast they dry wow and then a little bit of yellow on part of him see how that yellow displaced the red that's lemon yellow and it. it's wonderful about doing that and that actually looks really cool so I'm gonna let that be and move on to another of the babies you can see I didn't rinse my brush all the way maybe he's kind of green too let's let's make him a green one too maybe he's starting to turn a little bit which means that that little bit of red that I had on my pen actually winds up working for me because he's kind of starting to turn we will do shadows but we're going to do those this time we're going to do them on top of them after they dry we're not going to do the shadows at the same time and that way you've got a couple of different options of doing shadows besides um, putting them in there while the first color is wet which doesn't work with some some colors you can't do that at all because they, they sort of make what we call mud uh, they, they blend into and they just just looks like dirt instead of being bright and vibrant so we don't want to make mud by mixing the wrong colors certain colors you can mix I have a whole page where I practice with my colors to see which ones mixed and which two you could mix and which three you could mix together so that I would know how to which colors are making mud and which colors are not this brush is already loaded with that red convinced that little green guy was completely dry so I'm not going to go all the way over to him I'm gonna let this sit right there maybe put my little bit of yellow in there just a little bit of yellow going to the green is not a big deal we'll come over to a leaf that isn't touching anything that we just did if you if you're working the leaves one at a time like this you don't you know you can just work one you don't have to use your fan as much or your blower as much because you're working one at a time and the others have time to dry while you work the next one this guy's a little bit longer so he's getting darker that's the new gamboge you notice it doesn't push the red away like the yellow uh, the bright yellow does let me grab a little lemon yellow and put it here and look at the difference look at that that just swallowed up that red that's just one of the cool traits that lemon yellow has going for it that can work for you or ruin your painting depending on when you use it Okay, I'm happy with that leaf. I don't want him too terribly detailed. Who is not going to touch? How about this one right here? He's not touching uh, any. This is our green. How about we do our, our leaf? This is a leaf. So it's green. You don't necessarily have to put water under it, but unless you mix a well of fairly intense pigment 
um, you're going to wish you'd put water under it because you'll have very obvious lines in your painting. And the nice thing about watercolor is the way that the colors blend and you don't get that if you're putting everything down with thick pigment like it was an acrylic. Uh, it just doesn't work. On this one I am going to put a tiny bit of blue right there in that dark area. I think it'll look cool. Okay, I'm going to touch a little more of that green uh, without water on it and just bring it down the middle. And we'll put a little uh, lemon yellow. No, I don't want lemon yellow. Let's do new gamboge. Just to add a little bit of a light spot and some variation in the color. You can also take a little bit of this green that we've got mixed fairly intense. Add a little bit of I don't want to put my uh, brush with green paint on it into the well of blue, but I can touch the top of the dry part and get a little more of an intense green here by mixing some ultramarine with it, because I don't think that green was dark enough. There. Now we'll let that guy work. Let those colors flow for a little bit. I got a drop on my sheet there. Okay, where's another leaf? This one's a leaf, so we could do that. We should be able to move to the upper part in a moment. So I will I am building a website that will be full of training videos like this. It takes a while to build a website like that, as you can imagine. So we are working on it, and uh, in the meantime, I've been uploading some videos for you here on YouTube. Uh, some of them are older from other classes that I've done. Some of them are new ones that I've recorded this year. But it gives you something to work on and enjoy and let you familiarize yourself with my teaching style until the website is ready. And you will be able to um, practice at your heart's content and replay to your heart's content. It won't be lives where you have to meet me like this. It'll just be lessons and they'll be categorized for primary, or um, not primary, um, beginner and advanced and then there will be a practice session where you can, um, a, a practice section rather, where you can uh, go and uh, just learn techniques and how watercolor works and what are all the tools that we use with it and so forth. So I think it's going to be fun. This one does not have any of that yellow color on it. So I am going to put a little of that in here because he just looks too different from the other leaf. Okay. Let's see. Do we have another green leaf? I think I added this one at the top to be a green leaf. I can't decide if I want that to be green or red. I, th um, I, think, I, I think I want that to be a green leaf so he's a little guy that's just sneaking in from the back a little too much paint so I'm using my brush to lift it out a lot of watercolor technique is really in how hard you touch the paper with your brush uh, and that just comes with practice and also a lot of it has to do with how wet is your paper 
so if, if I explain repeatedly what I'm doing with how wet the paper is or you don't want it this wet or oops there's too much paint on my brush um, it's because that's a great way for you to learn um, exactly how the watercolor works and, and you can see in these lessons that it, the watercolor moves a different way if the paper is wetter than it does if it's just moist or almost dry or so forth. Okay, this is dry right here. Everything around it, I don't see anything wet. So I am going to do him next. He's still somewhat of a baby. So I'll probably add a little bit of lemon yellow to him or leave a little bit of a light spot because he's not, he's still small. There we go. Maybe a little more intense red down at the bottom. You notice the red color is changing just a little bit as it dries too. It seems like it dries a little less that well maybe my eye is just too sensitive but uh, it seems like that's a little more rosy but when it's drying it's drying a little redder which I I'm more happy I'm happy well, not more happy that's improper uh, I am happier with that okay who's next I think these guys are dry enough that I can do this big red leaf down here We're going to come back and do more layers. Those leaves are not completely done. Um, this one is just a little more complicated in that we are going to come back and do veins uh, because they're not pre-drawn like we did on the, the loose one yesterday. Bigger brush would probably wet this faster, but it wouldn't get into those little nooks and crannies, so that's why I'm still using my smaller brush same one I've been using for a bit now. Now this is fairly wet so I don't think my paint needs to be as wet but it does need to be fairly concentrated because I want this guy to be a lot darker. These bigger leaves they have um, rough edges a little bit so I'm letting my brush sort of do that for me I gotta get a bunch of paint on here before it starts to dry the pointy the the fine lines that I'm doing with my brush that is also a matter of pressure how much pressure you're putting down I can go very very light look how fine that line is I could press darker and this was in the uh, training videos also, but the, the harder you press, the fatter the line. And that's also a matter of just practice. You know, you get the feel for it as you go along. This can be such a fun medium once you get used to it. I started when my... Uh, we, we adopted two little boys and when we ado when I adopted the oldest one, I had always done oils. I mean, when I went to art school, we did a lot of different mediums. We did tempera, we did, which is the equivalent of acrylics, we did oils, we did uh, pastels, we did oil pastels, uh, we did pencil, uh, and, and watercolor, but uh, I sort of zeroed in on oils, as a lot of people do, because the brightness of the colors, but when we brought our first one home, our first son home, I realized he was already a year old, and I realized um, <laughs> he's kind of into everything and I have all this nasty oils and all this tempera uh, or not tempera but all this uh, what's that stuff called uh, that you clean the brushes with um, uh, you're probably saying it to yourself and yelling it at me <laughs> uh, but you clean your brushes with turpentine that's it okay so you, the turpentine back then you couldn't get odorless and it smelled really bad so I was worried about the you know my son smelling that and 
so I just decided I'm going to do watercolors and see what happens. And uh, I hated it at first because it was so hard and I couldn't, I didn't have the control that you have with oils where you can, if you screw up, you just paint over it. It's not a big deal. As a matter of fact, you can paint over a whole painting, you know, if you don't like it. There, There's a lot of options. And that is not the case with watercolors. Uh, you cannot go back and redo it if you mess up. You can work at it, work on it. But uh, redoing it and fixing it, not happening. So at first I hated it, but I did love the way the, the, the transparency of the colors. And that was in the, let's see, it was early 90s. And, you know, um, there was still a little bit left of the popularity of uh, pastel type colors, which was really easy to achieve with watercolors. So anyway, I decided to stay with it and till I got better at it and finally just fell in love with watercolors. Okay, I think I'll put his seam in and let just let that sort of seep around a bit. Not all of them, just a couple of them. Because it will move with the water and sort of create exactly what I want which is a bit of a darker area around the seam which saves me a little work later in trying to fill in an area so okay now let's see who's next that's all dry so we'll go with this guy now, I don't know if you've noticed, you probably have, but all of these I've taken off the paper at some point in the flower. In other words, the petal goes, you can tell the petal goes beyond where my card is cut, down here and up there. I like to do that on at least two corners because I don't know why. It just looks aesthetically more pleasing than always having a perfect flower that's exactly the same distance from all sides. It just looks a little more natural, I think, personally. Um, so that's the reason that I do that. And you don't have to do that. If you want every leaf in your flower to be visible, you can do that. Uh, you would simply add the point of that to it up here and bring that down a little further and add the point to that. Petal to that petal is what I'm trying to say. You always want to leave a little something to the imagination in your paintings. If if they if they wanted to see something that didn't require them to use their imagination at all, they could go look at a photograph. Um, a painting is supposed to uh, be a representation of something, so it can look very close. And my paintings are fairly realistic. I like the realistic style. But I also want people to be able to tell that it's a painting. I don't want them to think it's a photograph because, you know, what's the point? Let them go look at a photograph if that's what they want to see. Um, it's just, I would rather add different colors, different shadows, perhaps a different shape or anything that would distinguish it from a photograph and usually you can accomplish that pretty easily just with colors and the way that you're uh, creating your your whatever product it is that you're making whatever leaf it is that you're making whatever painting it is that you're making i'm going to lift a little bit in this white in this corner up here so it looks like it's white maybe he's got a little light on that part of the leaf That's not in my picture. I'm just like, <laughs> I kind of like to m m change things as I go to what I think I would like it to look like. There's nothing wrong with perfectly copying a picture either, you know, and just adding your flair to it. Um, but I like to change it up a bit. You can tell that 
this is not the same shape as that one. I moved around the bottom leaf and um, I moved, I, I sort of turned it a little bit so that it wasn't at the same angle. I added a stem, which it doesn't have in the original. So you can play around with your images and do whatever you want. With them. just the shadow to the stem which is um, it's got a little ultramarine and had a little bit of violet sitting over there or a little red actually sitting there so it wound up combining them together and I could put a little more green and push that aside okay I think this guy right here is next and he's going to be a nice dark one as well Those guys feel dry. I'm trying to follow the pencil line or the, the lines as closely as possible. And the reason for that is it might look a little funny if you're halfway over the one that you just did because it, they, you can tell you know that you kind of because it'll be a double layer of paint your old paint and your new paint uh, so try to follow you could even leave a little white in between a lot of artists do that they leave um, a little bit of white in between their new layer in their old layer or their new leaf in their old leaf. It actually looks pretty attractive. So every now and then it'll touch, but a lot of time but a lot, they purposely leave white in between whatever petals or whatever item it is that they're doing so that they don't run together. For one reason but it's also a unique look I'm going to add a little bit of this rose to this shadow area just so he looks different than the leaf that's in front of him notice I'm putting quite a bit of color on this one he's older so he's darker and he's also further back so he's darker so he's got two two things going for him that should make him darker than the guy in front And that one, I will add a little bit of blue to this shadowy area. Okay. Let's do this one over here because all of that is dry. I didn't rinse completely, but I don't care because I'm doing another red one. my first class something and a lot of people they do these classes and they or they take a class in watercolors because they're interested in it and they're fascinated by it and they've always been fascinated by it. I think everybody has a little bit of artist in them um, personally that's what I think I think that it just changes gears um, accountants are artists with numbers um, builders are artists with bricks uh, they're, they, you know, they might be able to find incredible methods that nobody else could think of of solving a problem when they're building a house. Um, architects are obviously artists with, you know, design. Um, so I, I think that there's a, a creative, you know, maybe I say artists, but really it's the creative gene that I think God put in everybody, and it just gets displayed in different ways. But just like God is a creator, we love to create. We just create different things. 
but there's nothing that says that you can't do two or three things you know if you're an accountant and you're interested in artwork by all means you know do the artwork as well maybe you make money as an accountant but you play around with artwork you know and uh, Mitchell Tull is one of my favorite artists and when I took one of his classes he said you know if you sit down and take a, a, a paintbrush and do like this you're gonna have a line that's red and if I take a paintbrush and go like this I'm gonna have a line that's red now, the only difference is my line may be straighter because I've been doing it a lot longer and I have the the dexterity in my hand just from practice but they're both red lines and if you have a desire to do that and you enjoy it you can continue doing more and more and more of it and the more you do the better you get the better your hand listens to you just like playing catch you know the more you play catch the better you catch because the dexterity in your hand and the communication with your mind starts working better and better and better the more you do it it's the same with art if you enjoy doing it keep doing it and it will naturally get better and better and better and I think that the artists that go crazy with it like I have where I've been doing it since I was three I think people say oh you have a gift you have a gift and I'm like well I I I have a I think the love of art is the gift because it still takes enormous amounts of practice to make it that way even genius piano players have to spend you know six eight hours a day playing in order to accomplish what they're doing but they love it so much that they're willing to do that that's the difference is the love that drives you to do something until you become excellent at it whether it's you know bricklaying or drawing or painting or designing or organizing people's houses for them which dear me I could use one of those us artists we tend to be a little scatterbrained now my sister's an artist and she's in this class and she uh, if you see her little workroom she's got everything organized all these little boxes and bins and they make uh, metal crafts for craft shows and she must have a little accountant mixed in with her artist <laughs> okay let's see who's next that's pretty dry that's dry enough so we'll do this one next I ran into that and I don't really necessarily want that so I am going to dry that so my new one doesn't run into that leaf okay that's a little too wet I'm gonna take some of that off just with my paintbrush because that's a bit too wet and it will narrow it will water down my red color too much I wonder if I mixed a little vermilion with that one. Let's see what happens. That's attractive. Okay. Again, I'm taking my time, but it's, it's wet enough. It's not going to dry on me. Um, there's a happy medium in there where you can take your time with your brush in the tight spots, but get out of there and do the rest of it before it dries. <laughs> it's all shiny. I don't know if you can tell that with the angle of the lights, but this is still pretty shiny. And as long as it's shiny, your paint is going to flow very nicely and the colors will mix. Once it starts to get dull, mm, not so much. Let's put a little yellow on top of this one. I used lemon yellow because I wanted it to move that paint. Okay.
That's dry enough. We'll do that guy next. And then I sort of bled into it, so I'm going to go ahead and absorb that into my leaf. Wipe the excess water out of my brush and come into my paint. And he's a fairly young one, so I think I'm going to make him a little bit lighter. You can tell he's just a little guy. bit of green down into a stem. There we go. And it's okay, I want it to creep up there because I want it to look like he's just turning. He's still a baby. He's still turning to the color he's going to be in a deep red later on. Okay. Have you noticed that the colors that I'm done with are considerably lighter than they were when we started? Um, you need to remember when you're working with watercolors that it will usually dry about 40% lighter, sometimes a little less, maybe 30, but I usually anticipate it to wind up 40% lighter than what I'm doing. So uh, if you find that it, your sky, for example, you thought it was going to be a beautiful cerulean blue, and when you get done, you're like, oh, that I can barely even tell I put any color on there. It's because it dries so much lighter. So remember to make it a little bit darker as you go because it will lighten. It's just the nature of watercolor. I have no idea what the science behind that is, but that's the way it works. This guy right here is dry, so he is next. And we are almost done with these first layer of leaves. And you will want a hair dryer handy. I think I'll, before we put a second layer on, I just want to make sure that the first layer is completely dry by going over it with a dryer. And my paper is sort of bowing a little bit, so I know that that's fairly wet. Ooh, that was a little pinky. I think I grabbed too much rose. I want him to stand out a little bit against that other leaf. So I'm going to pick up a little of this color right here with my brush. And then maybe add a little yellow right there. Okay, that's going to make him stand out and not sort of melt into the guy behind him. It's kind of what I did here when I added the yellow. Let's see, that guy's too wet. I think I can do a second, well, I'm, I'm just going to blow dry. Let's add a little more depth to his color right there. I'm just going to blow dry between this layer before that last leaf.
Okay. Same brush, little one. I'm going to come over here and do this last one. Oh, I actually had some water on that. Better even that out or that's going to dry really quick. If you've got a lot of water on your brush, it can pre-wet the paper along with the paint, which is what I'm doing right there because I realized I grabbed the brush that was full of paint. So let's pretend that that's water because it was so wet that it won't make those streaks if you do it quick enough. He's a young guy too and I want him to stand out against that um, dark leaf behind him so we're going to put a little yellow right there and let that chase away the red. That's just such a cool effect. Let me zoom in. See if we can capture that happening. I think he's pretty much over. Well, okay, I will catch that on another time. I did notice back here I've got a leaf and then it's white here, so I need to bring that green into into here. And we will do that after this dries because we don't want to mess with that while it's wet. So this uh, guy right here, I don't think I really want to do much to him. I'm going to put some veins and the color for my veins is actually going to be a little green with a little red and a little blue and I need a finer brush than that okay grab your finest brush you don't have to do all the veins you can suggest some of them drop there. These poinsettias have like tons of veins. And interesting, they're always directly across from each other. So I can hint very lightly at the veins without having to do an enormous amount of detail. See that? And this is just a little red mixed with a little blue and a little um, ultramarine. So let's do the veins on this guy right here. I don't necessarily go always perfectly straight because there are fluctuations in the leaf. And those fluctuations will uh, make these lines look, you know, a little crooked. So looks a little more natural that way and I don't put all of them in either I don't necessarily need to have all the veins in and certainly not at the same hardness uh, or pressure with my if I put different pressure some of them will stand out more than others some of them a little bit less so I vary the pressure that I'm pushing with with my brush I'm going to add a little more red to that. This guy I kind of did in advance, so he doesn't need a whole lot. He was darker, and I just wanted his to be a little more, uh, to stand out a little bit more. I wanted his to stand out more. Now I am doing something different on the leaf. 
and you can draw these on with white. As a matter of fact, I think I'll do that with you. If I was, um, if I was actually um, doing this for a, to sell or put in a show, I would probably uh, lift it. And I've showed you how to lift things, but that's not what I'm doing. So I'm just going to grab a little lemon yellow, a little bit of white, and a little bit of green, and make myself a light color. For the veins on the leaves. This will dry a little bit darker than it is right now. So it might need just a hair more white to be able to stand out. If, um, if you're struggling with getting a very fine point uh, you can skip this part uh, or practice on an extra piece of paper uh, with getting a fine point. Let's see where my little practice notebook is. I know he's purple, but let's say there's a leaf, right? Pushing harder, pushing lighter. Barely, barely touching. Barely, barely letting it touch the paper. Let's see here. Let's do these other leaves before that little white stuff I mix dries. I'm not going to take the white line all the way to where it meets in there, uh, meets the other leaves, because that's darker and you really wouldn't, it wouldn't look as white there because it's in the shadow so rather than having to go back and shadow add shadow to my seams I would rather just not paint the seams in the dark area and then it will look more realistic again we're not doing every seam we're just sort of hinting that they're there this little guy is a younger leaf Okay, now on this fellow, oops, not the white, Where's my bigger brush, back to my regular brush we used all along, and we're going to work on this little fellow right here, he's a little bit too light, he's attractive, but just a little too light. As I recall, this little guy was growing and starting to turn a little bit. So he was a little pink on the end and not so much on the inside. So I'm just adding a little water on the front and a little more green there. And it'll creep over the water, but it won't mess with... Is that guy dry? Okay, I wanted to put some shadows on this dude. A little close to the body so I can wet this down if you do it quickly you won't mess with your previous layer if you start scrubbing on it it's gonna um, be obvious that you are leaving streaks and removing color but if you do it very quickly you can add a second shadow layer and it will blend with the water where you re-wet your leaf and it leaves the first layer undisturbed Ooh, big drop. I don't want that. That makes our little leaf guy stand out a little more. And gives our shadows. And I think I said that we had a leaf back here that we needed to fill in. There we go. It looks like we had a little blue in that mix in that other one, so I'm going to add a little blue. 
so that he looks closer to the color of the other one. Okay, it is in the shadow. So I'm probably actually going to add a little bit more blue because he is behind under all those other leaves. So it probably should be fairly dark. I just realized that's actually where that that le the red the way that red leaf is. It actually should be over that. There we go. That actually should be red, and that was green. There we go. Sometimes if you freehand your drawing, and you're not necessarily looking at anything, you uh, can uh, forget what you were doing. Okay. I'm going to take just ever the slightest bit. Where's that narrow one? I'm going to take my little pointy brush, the little fine one, and put veins on the ones that are dry now, that weren't dry earlier. Not as dark because they're babies, so I don't, and I'm just going to hint at it a little bit. Not, not going to do quite as much as I did on the bigger ones. I'm just hinting that they're there. If I can see my pencil lines, which I can't on all of it, I'm going to try to follow those pencil lines. This one is actually near the top because he sort of folded over. There we go. Notice on some of them, if you see my pencil go over it like four or five times, it's because I'm trying to touch it so light that I actually miss it sometimes. And I don't touch it at all. So, sometimes you have to go back over it um, a couple of times to actually hit what you're aiming for. That one needs to be a little darker because it is a darker red color. If you want to be very uh, detailed with this, you can actually lift a little bit in between because there are ridges. I don't want to pat it with my paper towel because I think it would be too much lifting. But if you lift a little bit in between the ridges, it gives that impression that there's a little bump in between the seams. And that's just depending on how detailed you want to be, but you don't, uh, you don't all have to do that for sure. It's just a little option that I wanted to show you. It gives the impression of a hump right there if you lift up a little bit where maybe the light would be hitting it. I'm going to clean up that spot that sort of ran. I don't like the way that looks. I want it to look a little more natural. There we go. Okay, I think this is just about done. I'm going to add a little shadow with um, blue and black down on this bottom of the stem that's below the leaves just right at the top and then in here we're going to add a little bit of shadow as if it's other parts of stems or just too dark because of the shadows underneath I'm going to add a little red to that because this guy right here would be coming under there and connecting to the middle. There we go. 
and then I think the little seedlings on these things are like white or yellow or something so we'll do those with a little yellow and I'm shadowing the yellow with a little touch of violet um, we don't want to go in with green because that's not going to look right uh, as far as um, touching the yellow with the green but we can put little green lines like it's a stem on it and I am going to put a little black and blue mixed let's see I want to take some blue shadow and add a little more shadow to this, a little more uh, darkness to this underneath leaf there. And if I take a, another brush that's clean and just wet this out here, it will flow out without looking very sharp. It won't look like a sharp edge. Okay, same thing in here. That's underneath, and I really think that that's probably would be darker. That's a little too much water on that. Okay, I think. Can we say that's done? I think we can. I hope you like that. You could paint a background around it if you want. I kind of like it against white. Um, but some people put a black background around poinsettias. Um, I think that might be a bit much. But it's all about your taste. That's the neat thing about watercolors is you can kind of do whatever you want with them. And it'll be alright. They're very flexible. You can't control them. <laughs> they are, they are kind of their own thing. But... If you can learn how to work with them, there is a certain amount of flexibility in there. This little guy ran off the paper and left a red line there. So I'm going to wipe off that little red line. Other than that, I think I'm good with this. I hope you guys liked it and enjoyed the class. And as Bob Ross would say, happy painting.